Okay, I think it should be fine now. Is it fine now, yeah? Yes, yeah. Right. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, you know, so, so our, our main task would be to, to sort of uh, make anybody who, ha who, who doesn't know how to play chess to understand, uh, you know, what actually happens. Because I've had many people ask me, uh, yeah, you know, we, we, we understand in principle that chess could be, uh, you know, a, a great aid. Uh, you yes. know, for, for somebody who wants to improve in, in, in mathematics, but how, how does it actually happen? Yeah. And um, yeah, so I'm hoping that our session will answer that, our today's session, okay. and somebody will have, uh, uh, yeah. So should we, go, should we get into it? Yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's go into it. I'm excited. I'd love to um, <laughs> test myself as I've let my friends know that, you know, I, I might just make myself a moomish here. <laughs> no, 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 you will not. You will not. Uh, the, the point is that, you know, just like any, with any other thing, when we're talking about a new concept, first you have to, to, be, able to, to, to be able to understand and then to be able to sort of uh, apply, you know, the application of whatever uh, that you have learned. It, it, the, the process is not always easy, but uh, the idea is just to show that it actually is possible and it's a lot of fun. Okay. Excellent. Do you have your pen and paper ready? Because you might uh, need that to answer some of the questions. Yes, I, I do have my pen and paper ready. Excellent. All right. So what we're going to do, we are going to uh, start with the chessboard. Yes. And the chessboard is important, of course, because that's where all the pieces move. Yes. And uh, to understanding the concept of the board, I'm just going to you know, in a few seconds, uh, uh, you know, remind you how we, what is important on the chessboard. So we said the chessboard, there are three squares that are important, or rather okay. three lines, excuse me. Yes. We have the, the file, which is the, the, the vertical line. Yes. Uh, there's eight files, A to H. So all the squares here on the A file and yes. all the way to H. Then we also have eight ranks. So we have the rank starting from, from one yes. all the way to eight. So if you were to look at, at um, uh, you know, at, at that, at that line, that's, that shows the, 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 all the scores on the first uh, yes. uh, rank, second rank, third rank, all the way to the eighth rank. Now, where the, where the file and the rank meet, that is yes. where we would get a square. As an example, let us say over there, so we, you know, I've just highlighted two um, directions yes. so to, to speak. So uh, we have a, a square on the E file mm -hmm. and we have a, a, a sort of direction and another arrow that's that cross uh, yes. here. So we've got E file and six rank. So the yeah. name of that square would be E6, right? Okay. Um, so then the next important line is the one where we actually talk about diagonals. So, okay. so I'll make an example of a diagonal. So let mm -hmm. us say this square here is A1 and yeah. the corner square is H8. So now the, 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 the diagonal though, the, the squares all have to be the same color, you know, so you, you, you'll have, so, for an example, this diagonal, it's a black diagonal. If we join right. the two uh, squares, the diagonal will be called A1 to H8. That's what it should be called, right? Okay. Okay, very sense. good. Yeah. Very good. So then the next important thing for us to, to, to realize is that uh, the, the corner square, you know, the, the right-hand square is yes. H1, and H1 is always white. Yeah, the square on the right. The square on the yeah. right hand side is always uh, the white uh, square. Okay. It, it that is H one. It's quite important, uh, uh, you know, for us to understand that part uh, in chess. So now I'm going to ask you a very. Uh, it could be simple, could be tricky, okay. depending, <laughs> <laughs> depending. Right. Um, but a very logical question. Yeah. And the question is, I'm going to to, to hide the board, uh, you know, for this one. Oh, and I will ask the question that, sorry about that. 
<laughs> if a, H1 is white, we know that. Right. Now let us talk about a square, let's say E5. So we are e5. talking about a square on the E file on the fifth rank. So H1 okay. is white. E5, what would you say? Is E5 white or black? So you said H1 is obviously white, as you mentioned, right? Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, E5, E5 would then be, because obviously the, the, the colors on the squares alternate, right? So if Absolutely. H, H1 is white, then that means the next one, if I move back from H1, I go G, that's white, and I repeat that same uh, pattern. So the square that I'm looking for, you said is E5, correct? Yes, ma'am. That would make it a black, black square. Absolutely. So okay. E5 is black. So that is actually a, a, a test of, of, of logic. So we, okay. we, we see that, okay, you've got, and in many cases, you know, not only at school, but in life, this, this, yeah. the, this ability is, you know, the, 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 the rather the, 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 the understanding of, of yeah. this uh, yeah, is very important because you are given, uh, you know, instructions or you are given particular properties about whatever it is. And then using yeah. that, you have to find a, 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 an answer or a solution yeah. or whatever. So yeah, that is exactly what we do. So that is a logical way of using squares to, to actually improve yes. and develop logic and logical way of looking at things. Very, very good. Okay, okay, we're going to still be staying on. So that's when you pass with high with <laughs> with with flying colors. <laughs> and so I didn't expect you to get that so quickly. Okay, good. So now we're going to go to the next one, and the next right. one we're going to go to is going to be a little bit uh, trickier because it will it will involve actually more than just one square. Right. right. It, will, okay. it will involve. Two squares because we are yeah. we, we are talking about a diagonal, so it will it will involve two squares, yes. and and uh, unfortunately four squares. So two squares and other two because we're talking about two diagonals, and we are trying to establish if these two diagonals would meet. Mm -hmm. So right. So the diagonals we're going to be talking about are going to be on the white squares. Yeah. So the one diagonal is going to start on a four. So you. So, so you can just note these four squares, A4 to E8, okay? A4 to E8. Okay, A4 to E8, okay. Right, the next, the next set of four squares, I'll make it a different color, will be A8 to A1. Mm -hmm. Right, so these are, the, these are the, 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 the squares we're talking about. Right. So we're talking about these two, these two diagonals. There's one diagonal that starts uh, it starts at A4, ends on A8. The other yeah. one starts on A1 and ends on A8. So they right. do meet, but the question then is on which square do they meet? So I quickly looked at where they meet when you were busy showing me the direction on the board. I'm Very good. Of this one, that they, def they, meet C they meet at C6. There you go, <laughs> bingo. Very, they do. Let us let us double check. <laughs> so let us let's let's make hundred percent sure okay. uh, to see if they do indeed meet at C six. So we've got yeah. two diagonals, A four yes. to E eight. Yeah. And the next one, let's make it a different color, is H one, all the way to A eight. So they do yeah. meet, and this diagonal yeah. meets at C six. But now <laughs> let us. Um, uh, of course, you found a very, let's put it this way, a very mature and adult way to solve the problem, right? Which, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But on the other hand, uh, this problem, or rather this question, is sometimes, you know, presented in, yeah. many different, in many different ways. I'll make an example, you know. You, you, so in, in, many, in many cases, you need to find what we call the common you know, the common mm. factor that would be in, in, in mathematics, yeah. uh, you know, the, something that is common when you are looking at two different uh, 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 equations, lines, diagonals, whatever. So here... You can say the angles, okay, yeah. Exactly. So now for an example here, what we would, how we would actually solve this one 
we would we would actually just solve it mathematically as well. As you know, there are many ways to solve a problem, right? Mm. Many methods. So if we were to use the, the mathematical approach, we would have to, to write down all the squares on each diagonal. For an example, we would also say A4, the next square would be B5, the next square would be C6. Right, yes. Notice I'm writing the squares yeah. on the diagonal, right? The next one would be okay. B7, and then the last one would be, would be E8. That would be one diagonal. Right. Then I would look at the other right. diagonal and say, okay, my starting diagonal on this other one is H1. One, the yeah. next one is G2. Two, yes. The next one is F3. F3. E4. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. E4. D5. C6. Mm -hmm. B7. And yeah. A8. Then what do we notice? The common factor or the common square here is C6. So that means that ah, the diagonals they meet at C6. Right? Okay. So 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 that would be uh, an important uh, an important one. And you know, uh, we could also uh, yeah, there are many uh, you know questions we could go on this. And yeah. a very a very interesting one would be let us imagine that the diagonals were of a different color. You know, the, yep. that's just a question that sort of pops in my head very quickly. Let's say, let's say the diagonal would be on A3 and moving towards F8, right? right? So obviously these two diagonals do not meet uh, because the one is on a black square and yes. the other one is on a white square. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from, for, uh, you know, so in logic, let us, for example, think about a, a question that would be, you know, one using logic. If, if, if I was to ask, not you, but I mean, I would ask, for example, a yeah. student and say, imagine there are two planes flying and they are going to be passing this point at the very same time. Right. Right. So at five o'clock, they both are going to be passing that point. But what, would, what would make them not to crash? All right. So, okay. of course, uh, the, 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 it, that would be probably altitude. You know, one would be flying higher than the other one, you know, yeah. and so on, you know. But, but it, 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 it shows you that actually that, that logical way of thinking and that ability to look at, at, at a, a, you know, a question um, uh, is, is what you, you actually are dealing with in chess. And before we move on to the next okay. uh, question, yeah, I would like to highlight, yes. because uh, I did this intentionally, just to, 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 to think about, you know, just chess uh, squares and, and, and uh, uh, files ranks diagonals. But if yeah. you were to think about in, in mathematics, the Cartesian plane, where we talk about the X and the Y axis, right? This is probably uh, the last time you had told me that uh, probably around grade nine, one yeah. would do the equation of a straight line, right? I think so now, nice, so yeah, yeah, around there, yeah. So now this would be, for an example, uh, uh, that graph, and of course that's where you'd have zero, and then you have one, two, three, you know, on, on along the axis. The other one would be minus, right, and so on. So, but the 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 the, um, the method is exactly the same as that of a diagonal. Why am I saying that? Well, yeah. you would pick a point that is relevant for x and y mm -hmm. that, right a change in x and a change in y in chess yes. it would be file and rank so for an example in chess it is a okay a, and then on the on the, the 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 rank it is one so a1 and then you would look for another point and you would say let's say g7 Right. right. So it would be on the G file, but on the seventh rank. Now think about it in mathematical terms. That means it would be on the X axis as well as on the Y, y axis. I, then you correct, put, yes. put that point and then you join them together. And then you would have a straight line. Maybe I should use a different color. Um, then you would join these two lines together like that and you would have a straight line and that would be the equation yes. of a straight line y equals to mx plus c and if you look at it 
you you are able to 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 learn this concept even if you are in grade one grade yeah. two right mentally your mind is in a position to understand that concept it doesn't yes. seem foreign right. anymore yes exactly right? exactly it doesn't feel, it doesn't seem foreign anymore and even if you think about things like map reading where you actually look at longitudinal and latitudinal lines to yeah. find a certain point on a map that would also play a role when you think physics you know vectors that would play a, a, a similar point so um yeah it actually is uh, something that uh, one should consider uh, if one you know uh, uh, is is at school uh, because it's in a fun way and at the same time you'll be getting some of these ideas okay let's make our last uh, 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 i'm not going to let you go so easily because you you were able to you were able <laughs> you were able to get the answer so quickly it's it's quite amazing i'm so learning I'm from the up. best so it makes sense. <laughs> i'm learning from the best <laughs> thank you very much for that compliment so i'm going to try and 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 and, and um and throw a curveball, as Americans always say, you know, right. at you. So yeah. let's do this one. Normally, this one is quite tricky. Mm. We are going to, to look at the chessboard, and we are now going to, to, to take it closer to home. What do, what do I mean by this? We are going to still be looking at the chessboard, but this time we are going to place pieces on the chessboard. So we will take a knight, mm. and we will okay. place this knight on B1. And we will I'm doing this for the purpose of somebody who does not know how the pieces move, right? Mm -hmm. Now yeah. the knight uh, in chess can move to any direction. So any of the directions, however, there are rules, obviously. Yes. You can you 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 can you are allowed to move in any direction, but you must move two squares. So, for an example, if you are going to the right-hand side, you have to go one, two, and then you have to turn left or right. So, for example, if you are here, you can go, uh, let me make with arrows, one, two, you don't move to the squares, but you are counting it along the way, yes. and you are able to land on A3. Or you can go one, two, and you are able to land on C3. On C3, okay. Right. Yeah. And then when you're, when you're on C3, the same method. For an example, let's say you're on A3, you can go with a different color, one, one, two, and then you can turn into C4, and so on, right? Yeah, okay. So now, uh, may you please, may I ask that you, you write the position of the knight on your piece of paper? So oh. the knight is on, this is not going to be easy. Sorry about that. <laughs> this is not going to be easy at all, but not impossible, but not easy. So the knight is on B1. Right. And the pawn is on G7. Okay, so the knight is on B1. Right. And the pawn, and the pawn is on G7. Exactly. But the pawn will not move. So only the knight, we're only going to move the knight. You can move the knight as often as you want and to, you know, whichever squares and, and so on, direction you want. But yes. your task is to tell us the path that you will take for the knight to capture the pawn. And what we're going to do, we're going to make it interesting and we're going to... Oh, no, no, no. You're going to take away the board. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> well, this is like a very, a, a pretty difficult one. I mean, it cannot get more difficult than this. And actually, by the way, this is what happens when at the highest level, the chess players are now trying to calculate in what to play. So they have, okay. they have to say, okay, I'm going to move my knight to c3 and my yes. opponent will move their bishop to f5, just as an example. If I move my knight to e4, their bishop on f5 will capture my knight. So that's how they would be calculating, you know? Yes. So we're just trying to show this. Uh, so now we are using logic, we are using uh, ability to 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 uh, create creativity as well because you have to be able to to visualize and and so on. So yeah, please uh, you okay. can start. As it is, I've I've already forgotten where my where the pawn is. I know that my knight is on b one, and then the pawn the is on g seven. The pawn is on g seven. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> so uh, my night is moving. One to ten. Right. So I, I would be. Let's just see here. Wow. 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 My my my. When I'm under pressure, my brain tends to go blank. Completely. No, no. <laughs> but that is that, and I like that. I like to saying that because what what actually has to happen is that whenever one panics, yeah, that your parachute, so to speak, you know, yes, is logic. Yes, so let us say logic. Our night is on B one. B one, right? So if we are to move forward two squares, let's do that. Uh, you know, uh, sort of verbally. So it means yes. to move. Not we would not place the night, but we would move to B2 and then we would move to B3 and correct. then we would turn right for an example to C3. To C3, correct. That's exactly right. what I'm thinking. That I'll take my night, move B, B1, B2, 10 at C3. Very and good. So now you're on C3, and now what is your path? You still have to move towards G7. Take right. as many moves as you want. Okay, so what I would then do, if my aim is to go to G7, I would then go to, from C3, I would move C4, um, C4, C5, and then 10 at D4. No, it's just 10 at D5, because I'm moving from C3. So my one two is C4, C5, to d5 right Bingo. very good so then first you went to c3 and now you're on d5, mm -hmm. d5 very good. right mm -hmm. then with, i'm just i just need to keep remembering where my point is my point is on on, on g7, g7. Mm -hmm. so it is here i'm on d5 uh i just want to make sure i get this right so that means then my one two ten oh so then i would go um to E6, move up to E7 and 10 at, no, is it G7? No, 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 no. Okay. But remember you are on D5. I'm on D5, yes. I'm on D5. So my 1 to mm -hmm. 10 is, my, I'm just, imagination is everything right now. Not a problem. <laughs> Not a problem. But okay, I will, you know, I, I can make a suggestion. So you are on D5. So why don't you go towards the, the, the pawn? So now if you think about D, you are on D, then there's E, F, and G. So you have to turn right at some point, right? Okay. Towards the pawn. You, you're going to have to move towards the pawn. So let's try maybe now from D5 to move right. right. So where would you land? So you are going like from D5, E5, F5, like that. That's how you're calculating. So from D5, I'm going to E5, that's mm -hmm. my first, and then go to F, F, F5, and Good. then 10 to, 10 to F, <laughs> F6. Bingo. Now that you're doing very well. You're doing very well. <laughs> now your knight is on F6. Very good. So your okay. knight is on a black square. F6 is a yeah. black square. And the pawn on G7 is also on a black square. So now mm -hmm. all you have to do is to move to a white square and then you can yeah. capture the pawn. Okay, so my knight is on F6, which then would mean that... Um, wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, the things I have to keep imagining where the pawn is. The pawn is on, the pawn is G7. on G7. G7. Where's G7? Where are you, G7? Let's on a see. black square. Okay, G7. And my... Knight is here. So that means one, two. I have to take one, two, ten, right? So one, okay. One, two, ten. Wait, me capturing my 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 pawn is has to include the one, two, ten method, right? It cannot exactly. be it cannot be less moves. Exactly. So very that's a very good point. You when you capture something, it has to be on the last, the, on the third move. So if you are to imagine the one, two as the first two moves, the, the third move is where you land. So you're going to have to capture on your third move. Right? Oh, hi, man. Okay. Because if I'm on F6 and my You cannot is... capture G7 because it's both black squares. Yeah, it's exactly. And it's, it doesn't even allow me to do my, 
my three moves. So I will then have to go to, but I'm going back if I'm on F6. Let, okay. Let, let me give you, let me give you a <laughs> trick that you may use that may be helpful. Yes. You're yeah. doing very well. What may be helpful is to, to think from, from G7, the squares that you need to move back to. Maybe one of the squares that you can move back to, you can access with your knight. For example, from G7, the next square, G6, G5, H5, H5. If you're on H5, you can take the pawn. You are known F6. So can you reach F6 from H, H5 from F6? That is the question. It's so hard to do this. So it's a bit challenging. Okay, let me not say hard. It's a bit challenging to do it without the board because... <laughs> I know. That, that, that is... That is the <laughs> but you're already on F6. I know. I'm already on F6. It's just what's... what's okay, let me, let me cut you some slack. slack. Let me cut you some slack. What's in my brain is the fact that now I feel like I'm limited in terms of uh, imagining the, the thing. Okay, can we take the... Let's take the knight to F6. So that right. So I'm going to use your route, which was a yeah. brilliant route. You went route. You went to c3. After c3, you went to d5. After d5, yes. you went to f6. So now you're on yes. f6, and now yes. you can capture the pawn in two moves. Yeah. Okay. So my pawn is here. It's on f6. That means okay. Let me start where the pawn is and go back. So that means one, two, ten. One, two, ten. No, not that route. One, two, ten. Uh, um, I'm just trying to see. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I feel like I'm overthinking this, but, and it's so simple. So my pawn is here. So if, Think, think I, about it in terms of colors. You need to move to a white square. Yeah. So your pawn is on a black square. You need to move to a white square. And your knight is already on a black square. So you can do that immediately. The question is which white square? I can see which way. Though I know I could literally even move from F7. I could take, take my left and say uh, from F, F6, I go to E6. But... Where, where I'm having such a block is literally the fact that even if I take my one to ten mm -hmm. to get to the pawn, still is a bit of a challenge. One to okay. ten. One to ten. One to okay, I've got it. One Good. to ten. One to ten. One to ten. One to ten. Okay, I've got it. So Good. from F six, I'm moving to. Um okay, let me look at my thing. I'm moving to F7 and right to F8 and 10 to um G8. Oh, G8, not I thought I thought E8. Maybe maybe I could help you there. No, G8. That's that's what I'm in. Okay. If you go to G8, you're going here. Yes. Then maybe maybe I could be wrong, but let me try. Then my 1 to 10 would be 1 to 10. Then I would move to H8. But then you can't go twice. You can't go 1, 2. Oh, it has to move in a straight. Oh, okay, I need help. I'm stuck here. This is. No, no, <laughs> but here you're doing well. What, well. what about going to E8? Okay, try going to E8. Okay, so if mm -hmm. I'm landing at E8. Right. I'm landing at E8. Okay, can we just move the knight to E8? There we are. Then, oh, and then take it to um, F8, right. G8, and then 10. Wow, that was a challenge. Bingo. But you know what? You, you, <laughs> that, was, that was a pass. That was a pass. But as I, as I said... No, no, you know what? The, the, the reason why it became difficult, I'll tell you what it was. Yeah. It's because at first we, we started by taking away the board. So now you, you really have to visualize and, and, and uh, use other parts of the, of the brain, so to speak. And yeah. then we brought the board back. And then now you were using your eyes. And, and you know, so it, there was something, some kind yeah. of a clash. But 
yeah, you, you, I think you did, you did, you did extremely well, really. You did very well. And, and, and I hope that the, the, the public out there found this very interesting. And actually, this is just snippets of what happens when you are playing chess. And now imagine, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying now to, to the moms and the dads out there, yes. imagine your, 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 your child, six-year-old, seven-year-old, playing this game and, you know, you could be playing True. together, having fun, laughing about it. But at the same time, exactly. all these concepts are just, you are learning these concepts in a fun way without even knowing it, actually. You could just yeah. be playing this game and you are learning all these mathematical concepts. And that is what we, we are all about. So thank you very much for being a very good sport and a, and a brilliant student, by the way, so that we could, we could actually show everyone how it's done. So I'd like to say thank you very much, Notando. And yeah. It was, so it, thank was, you. it was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you, Adu. And, and thanks to Blue Front Tap Heart SA for teaching me a new skill. And um, like I said that, you know, we, we, we have to always challenge ourselves. And more than anything, this game is just as fun as a game of 30 seconds, a game of Monopoly. It's about applying your mind, etc. you know. So, <laughs> um, yeah, but there's just still a lot to learn. There's just still a lot to learn. And hopefully... You know, soon I can get a chessboard and be able to to memorize all these things because it's not so easy to do it without the board. I don't want to lie. It's not easy at all. It, it's almost borderline, not easy, frustrating, where you actually feel very frustrated. No, no, I understand that fully. And and actually, you know, that is that is why I would I would say, you know, I would challenge even, uh, you know, mothers, fathers out there to play because... Uh, we, we have different, uh, you know, there are different, uh, what shall we call it, sort of types, we could yeah. say, of, 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 of learning, you know. Some people are very good at listening. Some people are very good at moving things, feeling them. And so I understand fully what you are saying. You would probably, um, uh, you know, act, uh, you know, be at a, at, a, at a better place if you were able to actually see the board and move it. Because that in itself also plays a role, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you did you did very well, and uh, well, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you next time on our other session. Thanks so much. Hopefully, we'll have more other mothers as well as dads. Not only mothers, mothers and fathers. You know, siblings and cousins playing together. But thank you for your time and thank you for the lessons for today. Thank you very much, Notando. Have Thank a good, you. very good afternoon. You too, thanks.